honestly, while I was growing up, I had no idea about Princeton. I remember uh, when I was a uh, junior in high school, I was making different trips, and we stopped to see Princeton University for a visit. You know, I really didn't know anything about it. I looked at, uh, around at Princeton, and I said, I really love it here. It's really nice. I became interested in sign language when I was like a little kid. Um, my dad was a police officer, and he had an ASL dictionary. Um, and me and my sister found it, and we're like, oh, we should totally learn. This would be so cool. My mom is actually deaf, and so I grew up with a hearing dad and a, and a deaf mom, and that is somewhat unusual in deaf culture. Um, so I think one of the things that I didn't realize when I first uh, came here and like first started learning about sign language was that it is it is a distinct and unique language with its own separate syntax and grammar and all of that. I've, I'm looking at the students as ambassadors for the deaf community. ASL is a language and they can help to promote that concept. About a year ago I was approached as the director of linguistics to consider putting together a course on the linguistics of ASL. Uh, the request came through the office of the Dean of the College, but the impetus behind it was, of course, Colin, who's been such a terrific advocate for the deaf community on campus. Deaf people tend to go to a new place. The first thing that they do is they look for a deaf community to get involved in the deaf community. They can develop friends and they can socialize and communicate. That's how deaf people do it. So if you went to another country, you would meet deaf people and you'd begin communicating with them as best you can. When I arrived here at Princeton, there's no deaf community. So I thought, what was I able to do? So I would develop my own community here. So I had to think about how I could actually do that. So I taught people sign, established an ASL club and different activities and a social life. And this is my roommate. I remember how the first day of school when I actually met Daniel, I looked at him and I was like, wow, okay, he's a physics major as well. Cool, I'm a physics major, so that's great. And we didn't think any more about it after that. And then as things went on, he was in the freshman year, he was learning to sign a little bit, honestly, not so great. <laughs> but then, you know, the second year and the third year, you know, living in the same room, oh, it, he has improved dramatically. His signing now is very fluid, it's very impressive. So uh, in the Linguistics of ASL class, we talked a bunch about, in some circles today, uh, sign languages are not considered full languages and that they have all of the aspects of a language and so we've been learning the details of that, why that is, how that is in the linguistics of ASL class and it's been really fascinating. I was thrilled to teach this course. It's really fascinating. It's a nice dynamic and they're not regular ASL users. Some know basic signs So I had to figure out how to teach American Sign Language and linguistics to those that aren't familiar with ASL. It is a challenge, yet it's still fun. It's a great group. We have four or five interpreters that are very dedicated in making sure that I have full access here. And many of my classes, plus also for uh, other outside of uh, class activities, uh, sometimes they're academically related. We have problem-solving meetings, plus there's also social events, and they will interpret for me. Sometimes interpreters are there all day, sometimes into the night. <laughs> I have things that happen late at the night, even though the interpreters are tired, they persevere. And I'm very thankful for the wonderful team of interpreters. We actually created a SharePoint site on which um, Colin is able to log in information about the assignments, um, when the dates are, how many interpreters he needs, and everything pertaining to that particular assignment. Um, this then generates an email that goes out to select interpreters um, who receive that invitation for an assignment and then they let me know of their availability. I, I met him during Princeton Preview and I remember being so excited that there was a deaf person here and that I'd be able to continue um, exploring like the deaf identity through through him and through other students on campus. So, and going to the ASL tables every Wednesday and, and, and interacting with people learning sign language who already know sign language, it just, there, there's a connection there, you know, because it's, it's almost a part of back home for me to, to talk 
to people about deaf culture and in sign language. It's really interesting. So I think learning ASL at Princeton is completely independent of how many deaf students there are at Princeton or if there are any deaf students at Princeton. Um, I know I personally am not learning Japanese and Korean to talk to fellow students here necessarily, though that is fun and that's a great part to, a great way to learn more. Sometimes people may approach me and ask, you're the only deaf student here at Princeton University. Does that make you feel isolated or lack of language access to communicate with your friends? And I tell them yes and no. Obviously, I have, there is a language barrier because no one is able to communicate in ASL fluently. So there's a little bit of loneliness and isolation with that because it isn't complete language access. I must admit that it's not perfect. But at the same time, I really feel satisfied with my social life here because I've met so many friends who are really great people and we've developed very close friendships with them and a really good connection and that's very satisfying. Mm -hmm.